Here at Motorsport 101, we would not recommend the Royal Holloway University's Department of History for studying any sort of Formula One journalism. F Joe Sayward, welcome back to Motorsport 101. Welcome back to episode 264 of Motorsport 101. I'm Dre Harrison, and I'm getting the duct tape for RJ O'Connell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I had to hit the big bleep button. We never do that on this show. That's like the first time in years we've had to do that. B blame you two. <laughs> <laughs> Frigging demonetization like policy. Yeah. Uh, God. Can't have, can't have strong profanity in the first three minutes. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, I'm Dre Harrison. Welcome back. And in this episode, we're going to be talking all about the ins and outs of the... <clears throat> Hang on. Let me just pull the title up in a set list. I'm... Quote, the Formula One Grande Premio della Toscana 1000. The uh, 1000th race for Ferrari and the Tuscan, I guess they called it in, in, in those guys. What's the Tuscan Grand Prix? Yes. At... The beautiful Mugello. It's, uh, oh god, it was beautiful. Um, shame about the racing. Ish. Uh, we'll get into that over the next hour or so. But, uh, first up, I'm gonna introduce my panel. As always, RJ O'Connell. Hello, sir. Hello, I've been let off the leash. And by the way, congratulations, um, uh, just on everything, really. Hmm. As yeah. you do. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me, let me, re let me reintroduce Good. myself again. I apologize. <laughs> We're off to a good start today, folks. I mean, really. <laughs> confused. Confused boner. <laughs> confused something, well, all right. <laughs> well, hey, it's uh, great that most importantly, we have a uh, a race to uh, to honor the, the legacy and the heritage of the Tuscan Raiders from my, from my favorite... Um, Historical fiction series Star Wars, um, one of Gene Roddenberry's greatest uh, contributions to the world of high fantasy. As you do, as you do. King, hello. Hello. Uh, so, we, we certainly had a, a nice introduction to Vigello, right? Can't wait to not come back here next year. I'm no, so let's come back here some more. <laughs> I'm so excited. Not to come back here next year. Uh, I'm good. Let's come back, but not at MotoGP's expense this time. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be good, too. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> but this is a great track, well, though. It is a great track. It is a great track. There's, like, there's no doubt about that. Cam, hello. <sighs> On the day of the Tuscan Grand Prix, the sun rose in the east. Day followed night, and Williams failed to score a point. Oh, they were so close. So close. For the second round in a row, they were so close. Oh, sigh. Big sigh. Drake, your boy an... pooped on that whole parade. Good. At this point, if, I, if my boy's going to drive a shitbox, the least he can do is troll people. We're here for the entertainment <laughs> oh at this God. point. Dre's working heel now. Come at me, bro. Come at me, Russell fans on Instagram. Maybe he'll put a shirt on one of these times and they'll get some points. You can yeah. just at you can just at Johnson directly. And it's not my fault he, he buys their merchandise. Anyway, in this heaped edition of, of, of episode 264, we'll be talking Lewis Hamilton. Shocker. Uh, because his 90th Grand Prix win was only the second spiciest thing to come out of Machado this weekend, unfortunately. And we'll get into all the details behind that. It's not a good sign when the set list literally reads, If this shirt makes you uncomfortable, good. I hope he continues to beat all of your favourites for many years to come and suck all of the enjoyment of F1 away from your cold, shitty body. And I'm sticking to it, motherfuckers. <laughs> Seconded. <laughs> Thirded. Um, <laughs> well, we're also talking about the second half of the big story we talked about on uh, on two episodes ago about Sergio Perez. Yes, it's shock news. We were right. It really is Sebastian Vettel. He's free. He's oh, free. I'm free now. He's not in the Ferrari anymore. Yes. Freedom. We can stop the charade that we care about this underachieving team. Yeah. Oh, and there was we a love... race that had a bunch of 
fuckery, some good results, more discourse about drivers. Some cars were good, some cars were bad, some cars were held together with duct tape. It all worked out somehow. Just to Look, if you can't Bay. fix it with duct tape or WD-40, it ain't worth fixing. Agreed. Let's get, get the flex tape out, boys. we got a lot to cover on this one. Uh, we would also be talking uh, about... There the was a f- lot of damage. Oh, yeah. That was a lot of, that was a lot of damage. And uh, we'll be talking all about... Yeah, we've actually bumped up Formula 3 to the second spot this weekend because it was their season finale. And we have a new, and we have a new champion. And yes, it's the Cuffin Season King. More on that very, very <laughs> shortly. Because I am going to take that section to dunk on America's expense. Uh, it's going to be and hilarious. praise Australia. Do you really want <laughs> to? Do you really straight? want to? <sighs> <sighs> Don't worry. I, I, I will counter so, it. Somewhere. It somewhere <sighs> a Patreon supporter of the show, James Calantis, has a massive shit-eating grin. <laughs> And then he does, and, but and Sock is saying, "I told y'all this would happen." <laughs> no, no. Look, 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 look. I, I will happily root for the Australian as long as I counterbalance it by saying, "Fuck Steve Smith and David Warner" in the intro of the show. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're Dr- Dre waited till we passed the three minute mark, so I don't have to bleep him. <laughs> I mean, I didn't. That's, see, that's professional. That's professional. See, you see, you see, when you've hosted 250 of these, you learn certain tricks you can pull off here. That that was my master stroke right there. You don't you don't even know. So we'll talk all about the Formula Three season finale, as well as Formula Two, where uh, yet more title implications, more reverse strategy wins for a certain Nikita Mazepin, and Christian Lingard dunked on the field. So all of that and much more in an absolutely heaped uh, episode of Motorsport 101, episode 264. Places you can find us, and I'll make this one quick because we've got a lot to get through here. YouTube.com, Forza Sports 101. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you're listening to us again, please subscribe over there. Our social media is in the description and on the screens right now. Uh, Twitter our Twitter handles are all there, at Harris101HD, at RJ O'Connell, at Ryan Eric King, and cbuckley 917 and if you really, really like us, you can back us financially on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash motorsport101. $5 gets you early access to all of our audio shows. $10 gets you into the supporters club of our Discord server where you can listen and watch these shows live as they're being recorded. And get early access to the full video release before we release them to the public. Thumbs up all around. Uh, so, without further ado, let's get into the Tuscan Grand Prix. And boy... Dre King, I swear my two fathers were going to start fighting over how y'all felt about this pretty slightly above average Grand Prix. Yeah. Thanks for leaving me out, RJ. Yeah, because uh, there was there's a general feeling when we watched the race live on the server. It was a pretty good race. Not a great race, but pretty it's, good. But then a certain fine. someone who didn't watch it with us, uh, we, we, was we, 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 opened up Twitter to see that, hey, uh, so- someone gave us race a, a, f- a 4.5? That would be me. And I stand by it. You, you stand by a 4.5 for this race. You stand by garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, of course, Mutiny. I share a podcast with you most weeks. Um, wow. <laughs> Yeah. Damn. I, mean, I mean, you're not wrong, but you didn't have to say it. One old Buckley. Um, <laughs> look, Your I man's didn't couldn't enjoy pass this one. a Williams. And <laughs> like, like <laughs> this, this is like, like this is like the second week in a row this has happened. Like, like there is nothing you can say will phase me, Buckley. Uh, no, I, I didn't particularly enjoy this one. I thought it was a nothing burger with extra dip. That was the literal phrase I used on Twitter to describe it. I felt like it was a very dramatic nothing burger. I didn't find this one particularly enjoyable. It was a, I hate, I didn't like the fact that we. We had to wait half an hour before we got a full racing lap in. That wasn't yeah. ideal. We should, we, we, okay, um, we should probably explain all that. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll roll back to this. Yeah, we'll get back to we'll, the, our race ratings at the end of us discussing the, the race. Right. We'll roll how I came up with this conclusion for this score, but... Uh, 
We'll talk about the start. And, well, again, Lewis Hamilton on pole ahead of Valtteri Bottas by about, I think it was, uh, was, it, was, it, was it the nice margin? Or was it just a bit more? I think it was about seven hundredths of a second in the end. Um, it, we, it was a bit of a topsy-turvy session in the end because uh, Esteban Ocon spun uh, his car in Sector 1 at the uh, end of uh, Q3, so a lot of the guys didn't get a second run in. The real big surprise was Charles Leclerc was starting from fifth, but it was a almost bog standard at this point. Mercedes 1-2 with Hamilton in front of Bottas, and then Verst- uh, Verstappen and Albon 3-4, and four, uh, Albon f- P5. First corner happens, and you know what's funny? I tweeted no, before no. the ra- before that happens. Go yeah, on to say, um, Max Verstappen, while going oh, to the yeah. grid, reports mm. a, an engine problem. Uh oh! This he, he manifests immediately, right off the line. His ERS is empty. The car starts derating. He got he got the start of ages. Jumped both the Mercs, and then his car just dropped like a rock. Yeah. It's like, great launch, and then <laughs> it just yeah, died on but, him. But the big issue is that Mugello's first corner is sort of like the first corner on a motocross or supercross track, where it, it starts off wide on entry, but once you get mm-hmm. around to the exit, it narrows up. And when it narrows up with one car that is derated and sinking through the field fast something's gonna happen Uh oh and something did happen and boy you want to talk about the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat Pierre Gasly's race lasted all of a quarter and a half after winning yeah. the Italian Grand Prix and Max Verstappen dropped out too yeah this becomes a, a running theme with last week's podium uh, achievers mm. more on that later um yeah oh god yeah max max and gasly are out on the spot um max more out of anger than anything booted it while in the gravel and beached the car yeah good job bud (laughs) because pretty much the catalyst for this accident was that uh resappen was on the outside of one his car obviously couldn't accelerate as fast as everyone else car behind him Kimi raikkonen decides like i'm not gonna slow up uh, I'm gonna try to just drive around him. Only thing is that on his outside is also uh, Pierre Gasly. He makes contacts with both Gasly and Verstappen simultaneously, taking not only them out, uh, but Romain Grosjean's caught up in the accident. Oh, yeah, yeah. Grosjean. Uh, Grosjean goes sent spinning off into the gravel, missing all of his left barge boards. Um, Sebastian Vettel is caught up, kind of arriving on the scene. Can't avoid it and loses his front wing. Yeah, it's Carlos Sainz's his car. Yeah, and uh, right. and Carlos Sainz has his own accident independently. Has, it, has his own independent <laughs> spin through turn two, and I was like, "Hey, great Sebastian Vettel impression!" Plonk. I was like, oh, "For fuck's sake!" <laughs> right, right into Vettel. Oh. Yeah, of course. I was like, "You." Yeah. Yeah, oh, so man. as a result, Gasly's beached and out, Verstappen's beached and out, Grosjean's able to actually limp the car out of the pits and get it back. Um, did you hear the in, um did you hear the uh, discussion on the radio with his engineer? Uh, I did. I'll see if it still drives straight. <laughs> I think I'm okay. <laughs> I think I'm okay. Oh, Very okay, promising start. prognosis. Sounds uh, sounds like me and Indy car I racing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till they bring hey, quick hey repairs in a Formula One. Hey guys, is the car okay? <laughs> car missing three of the four wheels. Ah uh, mm-hmm. man. Oof. But okay. yeah, um end of the yeah, so we're we're not even out of the first sector and we've got two cars out and four more cars damaged. Mm-hmm. Safety car called. Yeah, safety car deployed as a result of that incident. Um, they bunch up behind the safety car. Um, the guys that had the damaged cars, like Vettel, gets their front wings changed. Um, there was always going to be a safety car. Like uh, Mugello is kind of weird because it's, because there's so many undulating hills on a track. It's not the most ideal spot in the world for recovery vehicles. So, it were bound to get a safety car here. Um, it was a very awkward spot just past the uh, the turn turn two apex, just past San Donato. So I think it was lap nine when uh, we were lap eventually. Able... Yeah, it was lap six. I think it was six. Sorry, I read it the wrong way around. Um, <laughs> lap six and we were able to get going again for a restart that lasted all of about five seconds. Now this is probably the 
the big main event story to come out of this race. Oh boy. Where do we even start on this shit? Um, well, we didn't really start because it didn't get going to begin with. Well, the green oh, really? flag, because, the green uh, flag was shown. Yeah, the green, the green flag, flag was, was shown. shown. That was part of the but, problem here. Um, yeah, that, that, that's kind of the operative problem here because in Formula One, the green flag does not mean go. The green flag means the leader's preparing to go, but dictates the pace. Well, because Mugello has that big straight, Bottas didn't want to get slipstreamed down to turn one by his teammate. Right. Which is fair. So he's still at... He kept a constant speed. That's very important here. So but he I, I, doesn't I'd like go. to make, make the point where Bottas' car kept a constant speed, yeah. but it did not move down the track at a constant speed. He was weaving, and that's a key point that does not get brung up. Yeah, he was weaving. Point. More uh, more to intimidate Lewis than to do anything else, in my opinion. But uh, Lewis is alongside him. <laughs> like it's like, like, ready a to go. <laughs> like it's a double file restart, which I swear there should be, that there is a rule against somewhere, but whatever. And, well, someone at the back of the pack saw two mercs racing side by side at the front of the field. And a green flag. <laughs> And a green, green flag. flag and and punch. I believe it was uh I believe it was one of the McLaren's and Giovinazzi. or no, it was Latifi and Giovinazzi. It was a TV. They pull out yeah. they pull out, you know, foot on the floor and uh oh, oh no one's going. And then they slow down and then everyone behind them starts going, seeing that they had gone and bad things happened. Yeah. Green flag and the caution comes out. This might be yeah. the best example of that so far <laughs> since the birth of that meme. As yeah. a result of this, Carlos Sainz, Antonio Giovinazzi, Kevin Magnussen, and Nicholas Latifi are gone. Double G, <laughs> double O, double N, double E, Gagoonie. And Esteban Ocon was withdrawn after the red flag came out to clean up the debris on the front straight. Um, the red yep. there was there was not not only was it a safety car, a red flag was called to clean the wreckage. Obviously, get the cranes in to remove the beached cars. And Esteban Ocon was also withdrawn um, because there was too much damage on the car in pit lane. So five no, uh, cars. No, his rear brakes were on fire. Yeah. Oh, on that too. Okay, yeah, so it was, it was a track error. Okay, separate incident entirely. In any case. By the time we did get going again, about half an hour later, we were down with five less cars uh, than we had to, in, off the first say, restart. And in general, we were down to 12 cars. I say, Was before it, before we move on to the next part of the race, I find it very funny that at the back of the pack were Vettel and Raikkonen. Mm-hmm. And they're just, they see the shit show going on in front of them and they just... Back off the accelerator yeah, just a little we're, bit. We're good here, they've been around. They, they, they've been around too long. They've been around like you know what we we know how this story ends. We're just gonna hang back here for like twenty minutes just in case you know. And yeah, next thing you know, there's a McLaren pointing out of the wall. Um, yeah, so red flag count comes out. Uh, you, you know the drill from Monza. You're allowed to change tires, etc. Um, you know you can you, you can change your tires and whatnot. And we were all set up to well, go. Yeah, People to come about. The socks so we're dying now. here. Yeah, very, quickly. very quickly. Well, I think just just to bookend the restart incident. Yeah. Uh, mm. They did after that incident. They announced that uh, a certain number of cars were being were under investigation, no, notably cars 20, 26, and six. That being Magnuson, Caveat, and, and Latifi. Yeah. Now, mm. uh, pretty much. They no one was penalized for this incident, which nope. okay, that makes fair, fair, fair uh, enough. But uh, twelve drivers were giving warnings over their actions during the restart. As all I'll start say, everyone but the center. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was very proud of that joke on Twitter when I put it out there on Sunday. I was yeah. very proud of myself for that one. So, I thought, personal yeah, I thought foul, I he was giving them the business. <laughs> so, That's my other favorite the, one. The drivers issued warnings for, obviously, Magnuson, Confiat, Latifi, but also Albon, Stroll, Ricardo, Perez, Norris, Ocon, Russell, Giovinazzi, and Sainz. 
Uh, but not Botas or Hamilton. Who Botas was specifically mentioned. Uh, <laughs> as having done nothing wrong. Yes. It was further noted that the driver of Car 77, Valtteri Botas, and other drivers involved in the restart not mentioned above complied with the regulations. Car 77 had the right under the regulations to dictate the pace. Now, Mm -hmm. one of the things they point out uh, is uh, there was a Constantine at the last corner. So pretty much, uh, I think they mentioned that it might, Kvyat might have been the first car to have done it noticeably where uh it's it's not clear if it was botas who was the first one to do it but uh pretty much the last corner was taken pretty slowly and it should be noted mm-hmm. the safety car was still on the track and he t- was. took the last car slowly then slightly sped up uh the thing is that for for every car that does that 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 slowing down and speeding up action gets slightly bigger each and every time to the point where, if you notice on the replay, by the time Botas takes a start, a lot of cars up front, real bunched up tight together, cars at the back, real, really wide spread out. So the cars at the back, you know, seeing the cars up front, side by side, green flag out, no car in front of me, let me put the foot down, see what happens. Right. <laughs> They're racing drivers. They're going to try and get what they can get. Yeah. I'd just like to point out that this came on the weekend that F1 announced that they want to have a $200 million entry fee. $200 million to get into this exclusive gated community, the pinnacle of motorsports. Crunch. <laughs> yeah, and the Volkswagen, uh, the Volkswagen CEO said he's more interested in Formula One than he is in Formula E. Then fucking join. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, pretty much two hundred million dollar destruction derby for for thirty seconds. That's my Lovely. favorite PS One launch title. <laughs> yeah. I, I preferred Raw in the series personally, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, ugh. I don't know what else to say about from that apart from this was a hot mess. Valtteri yeah. was naughty. Look, I know he technically didn't break the regulations, yeah, but that, that was still thing. a that was still a very unhelpful start. Yeah, this um, is the kind that's of the shit that people that's the kind of thing that get people give willpower shit about when he tries it back at the field and say on uh, safety car restarts. Yeah, and that's the thing. In IndyCar and in NASCAR, really more more examples in NASCAR when they first introduced the rule. If you're playing games on the restart, they could just wait. Even off. if you're yep. technically good to the letter of the rules, they can abort the start or they can penalize you. Yeah, yeah, it's to his yep. discretion. And um, like again, technically didn't break the rules. Lewis Hamilton going te- alongside him. Al- so the thing is, by the letter of the law in the regulations, it was not alongside because he did not over. He didn't overlap with Botas. Yeah. He was a, right. he was a he was next to his rear tire for a good part of the straight. But like, yeah, it was, it was wh- side by side. When you assume single file, you assume not overlapping and behind. <laughs> right, that's what single. It's not side by side. It's a single file restart. If you've if you've got a significant portion of your car next to another car, that's not single file. And and, and you can see yeah. how that sends the wrong message to everyone behind you. Right. It basically means you can line your car up next to another car as, as long as you don't overtake him before the line, it's okay. Like, yeah, and a and, number of other look, drivers did that. Exactly. We, we, we saw six or seven examples of that on that restart. Now, look, I'm not going to go out here and apportion blame specifically in any areas because that's what, this, again, the stewards had the same approach. Look, there's, there's a million different variables in that, and you're not going to be able to slap a massive portion of blame here on this. I still say the safety car line should be earlier up the straight for all intents and purposes, um, and that would have probably yeah, avoided then, a lot of this mess. But, yeah, but then you run into the, the problem of then the lead car is at a massive disadvantage. And exactly. Like, and I'm not, I'm not denying that. Look, I understand why Valtteri did it. He was trying to protect the lead because he knew he'd be a sitting duck into turn one otherwise. I get that. It was also partly responsible for what caused this hot-ass mess and a half-an-hour red flag and, and, and the fact, four cars in the wall. The fact that everyone... Well, a lot of people on social media said it happened in the races earlier and yeah. Botas didn't break the rules and pretty much 
the steward said, oh, uh, no one's to blame here except for uh, a bunch of people at the back who, who Constantine it up. I will Constant- Constantine it apart. Y'all get warnings. Nobody broke the rules. Let's can move on. <laughs> right. And we move we on this right into... Off. Yeah, and, and a point with the tires uh, that, that Dre had mentioned earlier. Something I noticed earlier in the weekend with this track, you know, some tracks at Formula One with Formula One cars, they don't look that fast anymore with the way cameras are now. Mugello looks that fast, and it is that fast. And it was killing the tires. It was, yeah. It was that sort of of race. But uh, the other key thing to note about this is when the red flag came back out, Stewart's discretion... They made it a standing start. Uh, they saw this and were just like, oh, "We're good for now. We don't need any more safety car restarts. We've seen this shit. We're we're good. We're golden." <laughs> well, yeah. somehow that this was re- safer. Yeah, that's not directly the case because remember, it became a rule a couple of years ago that you know for for it was pretty much put in for entertainment purposes. Anytime there's a red flag, there'd be standing restart. Uh, it's mm-hmm. It's Stewart's discretion to wave off the standing restart into a rolling start, but that's pretty much only used if it's wet conditions. They don't want it's a wet. wet yeah. They don't want a wet standing restart. No, for obvious oh, reasons. God. Um, yeah. So standing start restart. <laughs> and if you ever want to see a situation that might sum up Valtteri Bottas's season, starting, you know, um, uh. from yeah, like that standing restart. Just when you think Bottas is going to get there, Hamilton goes around the outside of him at San Donato to immediately retake oh. the lead. And wasn't that they didn't the look sec- back. Wasn't that the second standing restart? Was it the first or the second one? It was the second was the one. one. Bottas yeah. was faster out the gates this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I got, I got confused. It happens. Um, but uh, yeah, Bottas actually ended up taking the lead through turn one this time round, and Hamilton had to play chase for a little while. You see, it happened so little this season, it actually confused myself. That's my Hold excuse, up. and I'm sticking to it. Go on, Cam. We'll, we'll, we'll let this out later. <laughs> Dubious recording decision. Oh, God. I swear Hamilton led the fucking... He led off of both restarts. No, because Botas uh, got overtaken during one. The second one. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> Should we do that? We have, no. we do that? <laughs> we have, we have post-production. Yep. We start a bit over. So yeah, so we had the standing restart in the end, and Bottas ended up coming through in front. So we had, we got this second middle period of the race that you know we had Bottas and Hamilton in front, and they were pulling away from. I think it was Daniel Ricciardo that was up there. I, I, in I third love for how, how you say was, second middle yep. period, like like we had a race before then. <laughs> yeah, we no. had a whole six no, laps behind the safety car in third. Because here comes the story of the weekend. The hometown. Well, they're not really favorites now, are they? Charles Leclerc was running third. Uh, f- Emphasis briefly. on was. Because briefly. you know how in modern F1 games, you can boost the ERS up to maximum to hold your position. But if you don't turn it back down, you're going to find yourself getting drag raced. That's kind of what happened here. Ferrari brought this wonderful crimson burgundy car. They painted the safety car red, and in the end, it just doesn't even matter. Let's like let's run it down. Park in the early two thousands. Let's just run it down. First of all, the paint is gloss. They quite literally polished a turd. <laughs> oh lord! Charles qualified <laughs> this piece of shit fifth. Mm-hmm. And that's about as impressive as they look because he got into third ahead of Lance Stroll and you just knew it was coming as soon as Leclerc ran out of whatever he was using to keep that car behind. Stroll drag raced him and then the next car drag raced him the next lap and then the next lap and then the next lap and suddenly he's lost four places in four laps and he's being caught by Williams and Vettel stuck behind a Williams. 
Yep. My dude yeah. was out here falling like the cartoon anvil that's dropped on Alexander Rossi's 2020 IndyCar campaign. Oh, I thought you were making Seriously. the bank. I thought you were making the bankruptcy noise from Wheel of Fortune because that's what Ferrari is. Oh, <laughs> oh, morally bankrupt. Man. Absolutely. How about how about that for a fucking 1,000th Grand Prix celebration? A polished turd with Comic Sans number font crashing through the field. And this was off the Vettel had a free practice two electrical failure over it was electrical embarrassing electrical electrical failures don't have chunks of metal bouncing around in the fucking engine. Yeah. At this point, who cares? We'll get to the reasons why later. It's relief. It was a celebration. They thought we they couldn't wait to get to their uh, drive to survive party. How dare outside they? The track. How you know, fucking yeah. dare they put it in the same piece of world <laughs> as if f2004 how dare it exist in the same mile can i just say but, mick schumacher was having a ball driving that that f2004 oh, yeah. That's their, that was ferrari's highlight of the fucking weekend putting Absolutely. mick schumacher putting mick schumacher with his beautiful same design as michael helmet in the f2004 and reminiscing about the days where they were actually a competent fucking team oh yeah good times <laughs> good Good times. Clown Good times. ass motherfuckers. Leclerc ended up getting put on an alt strategy that ended up through events later in the race, because I don't want to bring up Ferrari again later, ended up dropping them behind Alfa Romeo again. Now, it didn't work out that way on track, but on, or on in the standings, I should say, but on track, Ferrari probably shouldn't have been in the points here either. In fact, they were beaten on track by a goddamn Alfa Romeo. What a real throwback to 1950. Alfa <laughs> kicking everyone's ass. Hey. Are now, we changing to F2 regs now? Uh, God. But uh, the we we had our uh, a bit of a halftime break after we 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 lost one of our podium contenders in a hellacious accident. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Um Fair warning, there are no small crashes at that corner. I don't know how to pronounce the name of it. Arabiata. The Arabiata. Arabiata. Um Lance Stroll competing in the newly upgraded racing point. Some of it is more like a Mercedes, some of it is less. Mm-hmm. I wonder what Renault has to say about it. Yeah, and so uh, all oh, these racing points, despite the fact they're obviously <laughs> Mercedes AMG. Bono, the brakes are on fire. No, yep. Lewis, it's just the Northern Lights. And but so, uh, and yeah, let yes, the retire failure. Uh, a bit, a bit of a uh, just correction from earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hamilton did pass Botas after the first standing restart. I mm-hmm. I, I said it because I I I would remember if Botas would actually lead a fucking race. <laughs> if it was in the notes, we would have known. <sighs> Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Um, left rear catastrophic tire failure as it loaded up for Lance. And, oh. Straight yeah. into the outside wall. Up. That that puncher was at about 165 miles an hour. It was a hellacious puncher. Can't control the car. Goes all the way into the backside of the hill, into the wall. Uh, nasty one. Thankfully, Lance was, was completely fine in the end. They gave him the once over in the medical center. It was uh, totally fine, thankfully. Um, yeah, but um, uh, the car wasn't. Uh, no, no. In fact, this is pretty important because that new racing point upgrade, which uh, quite a bit of the car is very different. And then the front brake ducts look a lot like a front running team this year. I think their car is painted black. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, they only have one set of that upgrade. So it's going to be a bit of a rush to get that prepared because it was worth some good time on track. Mm hmm. And uh, wiped out the barrier. Wiped wiped out the barrier. Now, again, pretty much now across the board in motorsport, if there's damage to a major fence or an air fence like in MotoGP, automatic red flag now pretty much these days. Um, And yeah, we got our second red flag of the day. While they had to crane away Lance Stroll's uh, on fire racing point at this point. Because the whole thing had gone up in smoke by this point. We didn't mention Um, that. It hit the wall. And then they picked it up. And then it burst into flames. As you do. <laughs> they were like, they're, 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 we have Mercedes IP, this car will self-destruct in precisely 15 <laughs> seconds. 
<laughs> and next thing you know, it's, it's on fire. steam coming from the steamed racing points we're having. That yeah. car was pink and in tatters and covered in white fluid, just like... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our second red flag, and more importantly, they do decide to go ahead with a second standing start. First Lewis ever. Hamilton's brakes are on fire because he's got steamed brakes. It's not a Bavaria expression. It's a Baden-Württemberg expression. Um, and Hamilton still gets the drop on Botas. Uh, he doesn't just get the drop on Botas. He, uh, he he tore his heart out into turn one. Yeah, yeah he went around the outside of San Donato at the first corner after the restart to take the lead, and Hamilton didn't look back. Well, um, we, we did have a, a very interesting driver now in second place. Go on. Oh, yes. Third, you mean. No, no, he was in second place. Uh... Alex oh, yeah. Albon. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Alexander Albon, who has still been so unlucky never to stand on the podium. Wait, we always it? beat him up for not being as fast as Max Verstappen. And all last week, everybody was ready to shame Alexander Albon, detract from Alexander Albon, to put Pierre Gasly up, which I was having no part of. Mm-hmm. And now he's in position for his first podium. Unless somehow Lewis Hamilton realizes and we're just like, oh shit, Albon's on the podium, better just yeet! Yeah, like, <laughs> even though, like, even though Albon was in second, and, like, obviously, based on the events of last weekend, people are like, maybe this could be Albon's first win. Like, it was clear that, like, he didn't have the pace to catch Lewis. It was kind yeah. of, like, Merce- a, a lot of people are let off, like, a lot of people are kind of, like, weird out, like, oh, Hamilton's like, not really pulling away from Albon, maybe like just like a little bit at a time, but it. Well, there was a reason for that, which we found <laughs> out later. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll we'll get to that later. But for the most part, it was the more realistic goal was for Albon to get his maiden podium, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, Hamilton was pulling away. Bottas quickly dispatched Albon to put him back down to third, but then Albon was in a dogfight of his own. You know, trying to hold off Daniel Ricciardo, basically, from behind him in that fight for the final podium spot. And not to mention the little bet that we didn't know about until now, or a, little, from a couple of rounds ago, that if uh, Daniel Ricciardo got on the podium at, at any point in this season, Cyril Abitable, this team boss, had to get a tattoo of Ricciardo's choosing. Why would you ever agree to that? Um, because like, that you is have a no terrible faith. bet. Because that's how much faith Renault has in their own car, which, as it turns out, is pretty good. Who'd have funk it? Who'd have funk it? But, uh, yeah. Albon would actually hold on in the end to get his to get his first ever podium finish in Formula 1. We'll get into more of that in a minute. Okay, get your camera back on. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. It's, it was a fairly comfortable display in the end. Bottas, you know, like Hamilton mentioned after the race that he was trying to keep Bottas behind him the whole way through. Bottas did have a couple of fastest lap attempts in there behind him. Trying oh, to yeah. Stay with him. Yeah, we should mention that because in the last mm. five laps, well, Bottas was hanging on to Lewis. Mm. And then... Uh, then, then Lewis decided it was time for Bottas's late race dick flattening. <laughs> God, Lord. And proceeded yeah. to pull a, uh, around a second a lap on him, reeling off fastest laps, just repeatedly dunking on Valtteri. Time he was on fresher, was. fresher tires, by the way. Yeah, he was because he, yeah, he he came in first and then on, oh, he came in second on the pit stops. Um, so yeah, there was even a, an, a quite embarrassing moment earlier on in the race where Bottas said, Whatever's, whatever Lewis is on, I want the opposite, strategy-wise. He wanted a different strategy from Hamilton. But then Which Bottas then blew up in, in his face. Because then Bottas had to come in first to change tyres, and then Hamilton was just like, you know what, I'll just copy you. It's the luxury of coming in second in this case. Uh, it, it wasn't a good weekend for Valtteri. Like, it's like the racing we say it every given... Week. Like, the racing gods gave Valtteri every chance in the book to try and win this one, besides maybe striking Hamilton's car with a lightning bolt, and he still couldn't get it done. At Um, this point, I feel like it would end up like Frieza in Dragon Ball Z abridged. Ha! uh, Nice try, jackass. 
<laughs> yeah, um, I mean, Baltas said he was distracted by lights on his dashboard on one of the starts. I mean, come on. Was it the big come one that on. said, RPM good? <laughs> come on. Like, we talked about early how Max dropped out. This would have been a perfect example of a race where Max probably beats Bottas if he's in the race. Because Bottas was just eight different kinds of nowhere. Just, still just got wasn't him second. There. He still got second because that car's a fucking sledgehammer in a straight line. He went yeah, by Albon like his he went like by Albon like he had four flat tires. Pretty much. Pretty much. And yeah, that's what caused the pain in the end. Still second, but again, just another largely mediocre performance from Val and another one that's going to get the people talking on his discourse and, you know, is he worth that level of seat? Um, that was one way of looking at it. I know Albon on the other end was delighted at his third place. Almost like a sense of relief it coming out of Alex Albon after that race had finished because, man, he's been through the ringer. A lot of people have been talking about his future, especially in the wake of Pierre Gasly's win last week. Yeah. And, and and Horner didn't exactly rule out the possibility of swapping them back around again down yeah. the road. Horner hit him um, with the same exact, he's too nice quip that he hit Pierre Gasly with last year. Uh, we he, saw he, right he, Are we really going to say, are we really going to say Albon is too nice with the way he overtakes people? Yeah, that's no, the reason he... why you brought him in. That's the reason why you said you brought him in because he has a killer instinct. He's gonna go for it. He's not gonna spend all that time looking that is, into his that data. That is the thing that I that Albon has, I think, more than anything, is he has that instinct to go for the move. Whether he's always right to do so is another matter entirely. But yeah, but, he, he has he has a level know. of aggression that, that that Pierre Gasly allegedly did not have. I don't think um, I don't think Gasly did last year. I think. I think the podium last year in Brazil, and certainly his form this year, has been very, very to the contrary of that statement. France Toss, right. right? France Toss at this moment in time is five times the manager that Christian Horner is. Oh, easily. But they won't That's... admit that because no, complacency is Alpha, awesome. Give Alpha Tauri the big check. I want to talk about Lewis Hamilton winning race number 90. I want to talk about him wearing a shirt that says arrest the cops that murdered Breonna Taylor on the front. I want to talk about how the FIA even put it on the table to maybe just maybe put out something that maybe somehow he broke a rule by wearing this shirt that made so many people uncomfortable. Good. I hope it makes you uncomfortable. It makes you uncomfortable. That says more about you as a person. Yep. Then, then it really should. Yep. Ugh, this this was a firestorm that, that kicked off earlier on in the week where the FA was, quote, I, I want to use the exact three words. I think it was it said it was under active consideration, I think was the term an FIA spokesperson used to describe the situation. I think it was about 24 hours after that on Tuesday where the FIA said there'll be no investigation into Hamilton directly, but they are going to be looking at the situation regarding podium procedure. Um, this, this made a lot of people uncomfortable. Good. As far as I can say, um, that's the whole point of a protest. As far as I'm concerned, um, there's no, and... there's no right way to protest, you assholes. There's no right way to protest with these assholes in particular, because every which way you protest is going to be the wrong way to protest. Yep. Right. And and that's just the point. It's not about the protest. It's the fact that they don't care about black people. Uh, it's yeah. it's as simple as that. They they want to keep moving the goalposts again and again and again until See, they, they, uh... they don't want they don't want to come out and say because they know they can't say that on social media. I've had so many tweets and so many messages regarding this in the last three or four days. Some of them just utterly disgusting um, on this and. <laughs> It's exactly the coded talk that a lot of these dudes are going to come out with saying there's the quote, there's a wrong way to protest or that, you know, or why couldn't he have done it this way or why couldn't he have done it that way? Look, it doesn't help that the sport itself is, you know, you can make a case that F1 on social media was very 
shall we say, selective in what got put on their social media regarding Hamilton's t-shirt. It was cut off in the side-by-side handshake shot with Alex Albon they had, because there was a famous shot of Albon as a child shaking hands with Albon in 2009, I think it was. Um, obviously repeating that in 2020, because they, both, they both shared an F1 podium for the first time. Um, this the F1 used the end racism shot that was in there. It was a they used a side on shot, so you couldn't see what was on Hamilton's t shirt. They weren't slick. Like media companies, especially on that level, know exactly what they're doing in in, in the pictures they choose to publish and what they choose not to. It, it, it ain't by accident. It no, ain't it, by accident it, at all. It, it was censorship. Call it what it is. It was censorship. They did not want to rock the boat by having their star driver and star athlete in a shirt that said Justice for Breonna Taylor. But they had no problem mentioning Wakanda forever when Chadwick Boseman died back in Spa. You know, that doesn't rock the boat. It doesn't upset anybody. You know, it's it's like the, NH- it's like the NHS flyover at Silverstone we had. Because saying we support healthcare workers doesn't upset anyone. Even though the healthcare workers were like... We're kind of tired of these performative gestures because they are out on the streets protesting the same weekend back in London. It's it's the same motive of we don't want to piss anybody off and you can't publish an anti-racist message in your sport in today's world in 2020 without pissing off some white people. That's just yeah. the reality of it. And you can't that do that I'll... both ways. And to that, I'll add, you can't be kind of anti-racist. You either no. are or you're not. Yeah. Like, there's, everybody knows what Breonna's, Breonna Taylor's story was. And especially... Oh, okay, I, I'll, I'll take that back for just a second. In the United States, everybody knows what her story is. Not so much in the UK. From a British standpoint, because I know the three of us are, the other three of us on the show are American and may not know so much about it from right. a British standpoint. We don't cover American stories on the same level for obvious reasons. It's a foreign story. We've got our own news to take care of first. And, you know, the Tory government here doesn't do anything that's newsworthy here on a daily basis. No. Uh, <clears throat> oh. um, but um, point is, is that stories like Breonna Taylor's didn't get anywhere near the same amount of coverage over here than it did in the United States. And it was Tom Benningham at uh, WTF1 that posted up a very resounding image of the European searches for her name after that t-shirt was worn. It was tens of thousands of people that had started Googling and finding out the story and and, and going off of that. And and this was very, very important because, like I said, it's, it's, it's not going to get that level of traction in Europe any other way. RJ, yeah, 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 absolutely. Naomi Osaka did the same thing by wearing... By wearing the names of all of these police brutality victims on her mask during the U.S. Open, it got people talking in the States, in Europe, in Japan, where they otherwise would not have talked about it. Indeed. And she and, and, she, and she, had, she said she had seven masks planned for each of the major victims we've had in 2020 and beyond. The U.S. Open as a tournament is seven matches long. Naomi Osaka went and won the whole damn thing. Um, we and... love Naomi Osaka on this podcast, by the way. Oh, she's a queen. I love that woman. Oh, she's a, she's, she's I phenomenal. I hope she wins every Grand Slam in straight sets. And if it's going to piss off all the contrarian motherfuckers in Dre's and everybody's mentions, if it's going to piss off everybody that was uncomfortable, you know what? Fine. I'm fine with Lewis Hamilton running up the record books in the most miserable fashion. I hope he complains on the radio about his tires and then still wins the race by 45 seconds every single day just to spite you all. I'm okay with that. I am totally okay with that. Who else is going to win these races? Right, and two powerful tweets that she came out with after the US Open final. I would like to thank my ancestors because every time I remember their blood runs through my veins, I am reminded that I cannot lose. And the great one she put up almost 24 hours ago to the minute as we record in this show goes, quote, all the people that were telling me to, quote, keep politics out of sports, which it wasn't political at all, close brackets, really inspired me to win. You better believe I'm going to try to be on your TV for as long as possible. I love this woman. I love this woman. And that's exactly We stand her in this house. Nissan spokesperson Naomi Osaka. Yep. Oh, yeah. And and that sums it up better than I ever could. I hope 
I hope the FIA doesn't suddenly alter the rules on podium procedures or change what's going to happen to the so it it if they do it's probably going to be to stop this kind of t-shirt protest from happening the the only people that have got even a partial right to complain about this is the sponsors that are on Hamilton's not Hamilton's race suit and even then good luck coming out and saying something against that gesture after this weekend I dare you to come out and, and say we didn't like the fact that Lewis Hamilton had a sponsor covered on the podium for five seconds uh, we you didn't know. like that this person has basic empathy yeah and compassion for yeah. others and, uh, yeah and basic basic empathy compassion for others and treating people equally is not political. No, no. It shouldn't most, be. And yet, somewhere be. in this political and this some, socio-political hellscape that we live in, somehow some, it is interpreted to be. Whether yep. it is some dumb Russian ops motherfucker with 40 followers, with Union Jacks in their hashtag, or whether it's some bloviating 50-something-year-old journalist of F1 of 20-plus years who's out here dunking on teenagers because of one simple typo, hi, Joe, Yeah. <sighs> yeah, to say the least. Lewis, I know you're never going to listen to this. Please keep making more ignorant white folks uncomfortable. Please right. do. Be- do not stop. Do not cease. I will tell you for free, the fact that the hashtag I stand with Lewis Hamilton was trending in the United Kingdom at number one on Monday night says to me that people are listening. God damn keep- right doing it and on a personal level i don't think we know how lucky we are to have a man like this at the front of our sport front and center i've always said one of the greatest compliments i've ever praised praised with lewis hamilton is that he takes the sport to places it's never been before and this is just another one of those things because i can't ever imagine a, a single other driver in that current grid maybe ever that would do something like what hamilton has just done and that is powerful, and I hope, and listen, long, long may it continue, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, yeah, a salute to Lewis. Keep, keep doing your thing, and hey, you're probably going to tie Michael Schumacher's win record next week. That'll get some people talking, um, <laughs> to say the least. Because, uh, boy, uh, I've, I've said it before. It's like when it comes to drivers and their reactions to social issues like this at the moment like the kneelers are at a 10 Vettel's at like a 20 for organizing some of this and actually defending Hamilton on the scenes Hamilton's at like 148 right now it's like that's how that's how wild he is when it comes to you know comparisons to the rest of the fields it says it says an awful lot about about where we are right now certainly um Right, I'll break down the rest of the grid results here, and then we'll get into the, uh, some of the other major stories that came through from the weekend. Deep breath. Lewis Hamilton winning in the end over Valtteri by 4.8 seconds. Alex Albon gets his first career podium in third. Good for Alex, we like him here. Um, hope it's the first of many, because god damn, the, the, the man needs a break. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo not quite hitting the tattoo parlor for his boss just yet, but another solid fourth place. I think it's the third time he's been fourth this season already. Uh, he'll take that. Cyril sweating. <laughs> Sweating, he's he's he's, he's, had, he's had three bullets in the chamber that's missed already. It's it's kind of funny how this he keeps knocking on the door, Daniel. Uh, Checo in fifth in the end in um in in a, a quite a dramatic week for him, uh, to say the least. Um, Lando Norris in sixth, not even scenario seven could save him on this occasion from a bad undercut. Daniel Kvyat in seventh. Charles Leclerc limped home in eighth in the end on on a two stop strategy. Kimi Raikkonen was ninth. He was actually demoted to ninth, I should say, technically speaking. He was originally eighth, but dropped to ninth because, because he took a five-second time penalty for his, uh, quote, illegal pit entry because he drove right over the paint um, on the edge of pit entry to come in. Right at over the, the paint? Very, very, yeah. He, ro- he yeah. rode over the curbing, the astroturf. Yeah. Everything. Like... like- he, the the but, Hamilton but rule most from importantly, Germany. Most importantly, it was after Christ, the yeah. it was after the pit pylon, the co- pretty much upcommitment yeah. cone for Formula One. 
Jesus yeah. H. Christ, I'm on pit lane past the commitment code. <laughs> <laughs> Etc. So that was a five second time penalty. It dropped him from eighth to ninth in the end. Still good points for Alfa Romeo. They've needed those this year, certainly. Certainly. Um, Se- Sebastian Vettel in tenth. I-, 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 I applaud Seb because even after the race, he openly acknowledged, I-, I-, I feel really bad for George. He drove really well. You can see what he's doing in that Williams. You can see yeah, he's driving really, really well. Everybody was so sad. Johnson was sad. My partner, mm-hmm. Vincent, was sad. They're all sad. It's just got yeah, to because get one on of the them. final on the final restart, Vettel got jumped Russell, who he was behind. He was behind mm-hmm. Russell all race because the Ferrari yeah. couldn't pass me walking down the front straight <laughs> in a straight line. Pretty much, pretty much, it was that slow in a straight line. They've suffered all year, and the suffering continues. But the jumping him on the restart was enough to put Willie to put Russell behind, and you could hear on the radio Russell gave it everything to try and get past Vettel Russell was running him down. Yeah, he was running him down, but Dirty Air couldn't, 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 couldn't get enough of an advantage to get close enough to set up a move, unfortunately. So Russell, it's a career-high finish for the man in 11th place, but no points in the end. Kiss Deep Med side. isn't real, folks. Kiss Med yeah. isn't real. Oh, and Romain Grosjean drove this car race with a car that was literally duct-taped together. Let's tape WD-40, Play-Doh, Crazy Glue, still finish the race in 12th. All you that work it. and no points because Haas, they're not so good either. Haas, Haas is still a dull boy. There's, there's f- legitimate claim that you can make that Alfa Romeo is now the best ferrari power team because before, before Leclerc pitted another time while he was dropping through the field, Kimi was running him down. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that was all 12 cars that made the flag. We had eight cars fail to finish. As mentioned, Verstappen and Gasly didn't make it past turn three. Uh, Carlos Sainz, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Kevin Magnus, Kevin Magnus and Nicholas Latifi all crashed out on that uh, highly spicy second restart under the safety car. Um, Ocon was withdrawn during that red flag period um, for uh, hot breaks, to say the least, and the Lance Stroll had the puncher. So eight DNFs. Fastest lap bonus goes to Lewis Hamilton. Again, I know you're all shocked at this. He set the fastest lap of the race on the penultimate lap of the race just to rub Bottas's nose in it even further. Poor fella. Um, what a shame. Um, championship standings. It's starting to look ominous here already. Hamilton now has a 55-point lead on Valtteri Bottas in the championship. He has starting an 80-point... Yeah. Starting to... I, I guess I'm being generous here, all right? Um, Generosity because, is wasted upon this. Because arguably the second strongest man in the field is a man called is Max Verstappen, pound for pound. Back-to-back DNFs for Max Verstappen means he is now 80 points behind Lewis Hamilton. He already decided to concede. He's already yeah. decided to concede the championship. Let's, let's just point out, we're over halfway through this season now. We've had nine races, we've only got eight to go. We're over halfway, we're only barely halfway through, and Max has already thrown in the towel at minus 80. He was, we're done he was here. Never, he was never, he was never no, a threat in the championship anyways. Mercedes... This weekend, I mean, they were taking some corners flat that I never thought I'd ever see a car take flat. Yeah, honestly, the spectacle of Mugello itself was beautiful in the... Look, I'm a MotoGP fan. I've been for 20-odd years. Like, you're used to seeing bikes go around it. And, like, to put it into perspective, Mark Marquez has the all-time lap record on two wheels at Mugello. I think it's a 145.3. We were seeing 115s from Lewis Hamilton in qualifying. 30 seconds a lap faster. So when you're seeing these these cars take these corners at speeds, you would not even fathom. You know what it's like? It's like driving on a Mon car on Gran Turismo 6, and then you're going into... And next thing you know, you're driving a Red Bull X car all of a sudden. And it just, it just basically... You have to warp your brain to like the new levels of speed you're seeing out here. It's... It's yeah, ridiculous. And, and um, as well, I mean, I think I think the the measurement in uh, free practice was five point six G's through a couple corners for Lewis. Yeah, sustained. The is physical. That is five point six. Unreal. Five point six G's. I love seeing cars time trial this track. 
As far as overtaking, well, I mean, apart from a few slam dunk, easy peasy TRS passes. I'm that's all That's all there that. was other than restart passes because uh, this track, this track, the, the air ascended beyond dirty. Yeah, like pretty much the only time we got to see anyone try for a move. So like the, the non-easy DRS passes where you use the DRS to get around the out, well, to get on the outside in turn one. And it's pretty much how long can you stay side by side before someone yields. The like, air quality right. was MXC's septic sludge. I think the furthest yep. we got was, <laughs> I forgot who, but like two cars from the midfield were side by side all the way up until turn four, which was crazy. <laughs> Woo! Turn four! Uh, we're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Hey, you uh, want to be side by side with someone for half a lap? Sounds like a terrible oh, idea. Oh no, ask uh... um... Oh god. It's, 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 it's like watching Top Gear when they tried Rally Cross. That, like, that's just how wild the whole thing ended up being. Um... It's, it was crazy, to say the least. Um, just clicking up the rest of the championship real quick. Lando Norris now back up to 4th on 65. Albon now 5th on 63. Lance Stroll on 57. Daniel Ricciardo on uh, 53. And Charles Leclerc down to 8th now on 49 points. Uh, in the end, Constructors, is it even worth really going over at this point? No. 152 point lead for Mercedes now. They are almost 2-1 to one in front of Red Bull. I'm not making this up. Um, uh, McLaren third on 106, Racing Point on 92, Renault on 83, Ferrari on 66, uh, AlphaTauri on 53, uh, due to Kvyat seventh. Uh, Alfa Romeo have doubled their points tally. They're now up to four. Good, good for them. Um, they've pulled clear of Haas in in, uh, in ninth on one point, and Williams, despite their third eleventh place finish of the year. Still no points. And Hell technically, finished. technically, because Latifi finished in 11th earlier in the year, he's still ahead of Russell uh, in the Drivers' yeah. Championship. Because he has two 11th places to Russell's one. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a count back rule. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a tough break for George Russell. It really is. But at least he's not bottom of the championship like Romain Grosjean has. Because he hasn't finished 11th for this season so far. His best result was 12th at this Grand Prix. <laughs> As you do. Plus. Oh, dear. Now, let's get into some of the other new stories real quick. We've on because we're already at the hour mark, right? This is going to be a long boy. But uh, we, we're going to embrace it because there was a lot to get through this on this weekend anyway. Sebastian Vettel. Is going to Aston Martin. He's free. That, he's, he's free. He's you are all free, free now. We can we stop free. pretending we care about Ferrari. We can stop the charade. We it's are free over. from this car. This car which is nested with failure in every component. We are free. We can smile again. <laughs> Rebuild the church and paint it British racing green. We're just going to end up repainting it that sickly lime green that Ass Martin Racing wants to use for some fucking If reason. they use it next year, I'm going to be so heated. I'm just, Look. I just hope Sebastian has fun. Oh yeah, yep. that'd be nice. Look, he gets to represent Aston Martin as a global ambassador. You know how sick that would be? As a global ambassador for maybe the yeah. coolest car company in the world? He basically you know gets to be James is? Bond. And That's he so can guest cool. star in a Bond movie. I can't allow you to win this Grand Prix, <sighs> Mr. Weber. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so cool. Look, we're not going to talk about this too much because we mentioned a lot of the ins and outs already uh, last week with Sergio Perez um, on the way on the way out, uh, and that was confirmed basically. Uh, literally, literally, the day we recorded that, the day that the Perez news was official. Literally, the next morning, we got news that Vettel had signed. So, the inconvenient timing of our recording on the Wednesday of last week. And on Thursday morning... To be fair, the, the, we kind of like knew. Yeah, we, we we heavily hinted at it. We all kind of knew it was going to be Sebastian, but uh, we, we needed... You know, that was official, official confirmation on that. Hope he has fun. If he can put the team in a, in a, in a position where they can maybe win races, mission accomplished as far as he's concerned, as, oh, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Uh, I mean, um, going into... I mean, with the upgrades this weekend... Because I feel like they were more important than I think people realized. I think it proves yeah. that Racing Point has the ability to develop their own, to move this car forward. The worry with right. them making a W10 copy is that, well, they'd come into the year, 
guns blazing and then not develop it across the year. Mm, I still this feel good about that. that. I feel I still feel good about Aston Martin standing, and if Vettel puts them into a point, if he wins at least one race or gives someone, whether it's Stroll or whoever else is going to be his teammate, further on down the road, if he puts them in a position where they can consistently win Grand Prix and compete for podiums, that's the second part of his legacy already done and dusted. Which, of course, would emulate, you know, Michael, because mm-hmm. the second part of Michael's legacy is the Mercedes empire now. He, he helped lay the foundations with Ross and with the management in that team. And as well, I mean, with the regulation change coming in for 2022 and the funding that they'll have and the Mercedes engines that they'll have, who's to say they won't be fighting for podiums then? Especially you know, when Ferrari Ferrari gets two chances to fix their engine. If they don't, they're hosed. They're hosed yeah. until 2025, I should say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. But, uh, yeah, must have got a bit of excitement in the Vettel camp for the first time in a while. That'll be fun. We can smile. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, the good times. And Gentlemen. now it's time for the Formula 3 Championship of the World. We now, started disclaimer. The Disclaimer, I did not watch this race live, so I'm going to let the rest of y'all take the reins. Yeah, we like- had six drivers that were mathematically eligible, but it really came down to three protagonists. Oscar Piastri and Logan Sargent at Prima, Teo Porsche at ART Grand Prix. And Oscar Piastri had to overcome a lot of odds. Of course, the DRS troubles early on in the season. Then he started race one with a five grid spot penalty, which sent him way down the order to start race one. He had to scratch and claw his way to finish just outside the points, so he doesn't even get flipped to the front of the field for race two. Yeah, he made, didn't, didn't he miss it by one spot to get reverse grid pole? Missed it by one spot. Finished 11th behind Jack Doohan. Yeah. Uh, Vesti won race one in the end. Almost for pride, really. He needed a whole heap of permutations, even if he had won race one yeah, to stay alive, it was basically. Vesti, Lawson, and Beckman, who were kind of, to use the NASCAR analogy of the 92 finale, they were the Kyle Petty, Mark Martin, and Harry Gant of this scenario, where they basically mm. had to have the sky fall out. Vesti yeah. and Drake Hughes had a great scrap, by the way. Jake Hughes they was did. in the wars. He really was. Great great scrap with Vesti. Vesti run over the line by 0.3 of a second in the end. Theo Porsche would finish in third. This was important because it would it would it would leap vault him a little bit there. It was minus I think it was minus seven going into that final race. Minus nine going minus into nine. the last race of the season. Logan Sargent finished sixth, and that brought him a level with Piastri on points. So the top mm-hmm. two in the standings, whoever finishes ahead is likely to win this championship because there are only 15 points available in race two because it effectively the old sprint race format. Well, then you have yeah. that and the two fastest lap points. But for all intents and purposes, 15 points are available for a win. Right. Race then we get two. to race two. Race two. And uh, let's see. <laughs> well... There's no nice way of putting this, is it, fellas? Um, it's 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 not nice when, shall we say, one of the main title contenders' race is a very short one. Oh. Folks, America has fallen. Logan Sargent <laughs> and Liram Zendelli collide two corners in to race two of a championship deciding race. We literally had Marvel <sighs> Civil War. Logan Sargent was Captain America. Liram Zendelli is obviously Iron Man. And whoever wins, well, America loses. Uh, b- uh. But, though it sh- it should be noted that it it wasn't either of the two that provoked this crash. Unbelievable. No, it wasn't. It was another one of those awkward free rides. Tell us more, King. It was it was Sebastian Fernandez. Yeah, <sighs> Fernandez. Uh, uh, what, what was the tweet you sent me on, on the M101 Twitter, King? We're like, we, we, like, we, like we, we're hunting down Fernandez <laughs> yeah, as we speak. Fine, Fernandez. And I hit, and I hit you with a Family Guy gif of, I just want to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. He's loading his shotgun up. It's like, I just want to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. <laughs> though, <laughs> though this incident, unfortunately, it, it ended Sergeant's possible run at the championship. Though it, it, it made the... It, it, 
opened up the opportunity for Fernandez's teammate to win the championship. Because Taylor yeah. Porcher was on one, and Oscar Piastri still had to claw his way to get even into the points. Mm-hmm. And he was having a hard time of it because he was dealing with Fernandez. He had his teammate Vesti around him. He, had, he was in a group with Smolier and Hughes in there. It was scrappy, to say the least. And it wasn't going to be a gimme. And I was, I was sitting there wondering, thinking, which team will be first to blink on a potential team order situation if it came down to it? Because, like, we saw Fernandez was running in a podium position at one point. Fernandez had never been on a Formula 3 podium to this point. And I was, and I think it was Porsche that was directly behind him at one point, and they were sitting there thinking they wouldn't have Fernandez cough up a maiden podium for him to win the championship, right? <laughs> Turns out it was Prima that blinked first, and it was like because they had Vesti directly in front of Piastri, and they said Vesti either get past him or make way for Piastri, and I'm just like, there it is, there it is, no, there's the team no. orders call. Vesti did find a way around Jay Hughes. <laughs> He did. Vesti had the pace. Piastri, not so much. And, um, yeah, Vesti did actually find a way to get around him on this one. And, and meanwhile, further on, Porsche had gotten close enough to overtake um, to overtake Fernandez as he was slipping down the order due to tyre wear later on in the race. <clears throat> so we were poised on a very delicate situation where if, you know, if we had, um, if Porsche made up one more spot, and was able to overtake Beckman in a two-point championship, the swing would have given Porsche the championship, as well as the fact that we had also had Piastri further back, and he was under pressure. Um, so, yeah, this was this was a very tense uh, last few laps of the championship to see if anything would happen. Porsche gave it his all. He really did, but he couldn't make ground on Beckman. They were pretty much 50-50 um, on that one, and... Lawson, in, in, who was already seven seconds down the road and already won the race yeah. by this point. Beckman had finished second, Porsche third, and just to rub salt in the wound, Oscar Piastri passed Fernandez going over the line in a drag race finish to take seventh and the championship. Um, so yeah, Oscar Piastri, your new Formula 3 2020 champion. Whew. Tense one. <laughs> Oscar's a good driver. This is his second straight single-seater title. He won Formula Renault Euro Cup last year. And uh, interesting thing, in the history of GP3 slash the FIA Formula 3 championship, he is now the eighth rookie since 2011, the second season, to win the title. The other seven are Valtteri Bottas, Daniel Kvyat, Alex Lynn, Esteban Ocon, Charles Leclerc, George Russell, and Robert Schwartzman. Of, that, of those seven other drivers... Six of the five of them are already in Formula One. One of them's gonna be there soon, and the other was just unlucky not to get there, but at least he's in Formula E now, which is still world championship of single seaters. Yay! And he's gonna be moving up to F2, and likely he will be a title favorite come 2021. Probably. And uh yeah, I wonder how the celebration of the DRS wing went. Anyone? Oh. Mm. Y'all already <laughs> know. You already know what I think happened there. This one is the countryside. Went to the olive listen tree. To cu- listen to cuffing season. Went to the olive tree. <laughs> got, a, got a basket full of olives. Get some olive oil. Rub some olive oil down on that rear wing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, oh, I, I, for, for the for li- for y'all listening, I've been playing a lot of FF Seven Remake lately, and this is the first time that we've reached that level of thirst on this podcast. God, Ugh. it's we're so thirsty we would even we would even settle for all sport thirst quencher, the literal Gatorade at home of sports oh. drinks. I still wouldn't yep. settle for a Crystal Pepsi. Indeed. And just as I say that, as I praise Piastri, Australia wins the one-day cricket series. God damn it! This is what happens when I'm nice to Australia. <laughs> oh! You deserve it. As all you deserve it. Should be. Go, Logan Sergeant, <laughs> the the true people's champion of Formula Three. Ah, that hurts. F Mitchell Stark. Um. Anyway, <laughs> should we talk about Formula Two real quick? Yes. Formula 2 was... And now I'm re-engaged, because I did watch these live. 
Yes. Oh boy, you missed. Uh, you you got uh, a very interesting podcast with friend of the show Dan Tickdom. Dan Tickdom now in the podcast game. Dan, just stop. You're the thing so, is you're good at this driving thing. Just stop, please. It ruined my race. You're ruining yeah. the airwaves. Quote. What was it? Wasn't the funniest line the quote where he goes. I can't believe what I've done in life to deserve this, and I'm just like, <laughs> Dan, well, really? Because because we 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 kind of have an idea, Dan. We kind of know. Woo! We kind of know what you did. Oh, Dan! That. Oh, Dan! Oh no, no, Dan! We know. We've seen it, buddy. We've seen it. Uh, oh. No, Dan. Bless his heart. Look, I I certainly think that the race directors are effing with him a little bit. Because I think they, they all oh, play a, a lot of his messages. I have to say, it is tremendously entertaining. Exactly. I made a joke on the show where I basically I made a joke on the Discord where I said, "Now that's what I call Dan Tickton coming soon to Twenty Seven CD Collection." Like, I, like, look, give. I will pay five bucks a month. I will take my Sophia Floresh premium Instagram money away and move it towards a subscription oh. service. I was joking, by the way. A, a, free, a subscription service to have Dan Tictum's radio messages available to me on a drip feed. Give it to me. I will pay five bucks. because It's hilarious. The entertainment is great. It's, I love it. I really do. And, uh... Huh. Oh man, it, um, it's, it was credit, dramatic to say credit to friend of the credit to friend of the stow Stuart Chain Bear Taylor for the quote. Dan Tickton reminds me of that "Come Die with Me" guy that throws everyone out of his house. Uh, <laughs> you Stuart, just, Stuart, w- <laughs> I don't know if it's tweet of the year. I don't know if it's tweet of the year as a result of the last day that happened in basketball. Hi, Damian Lillard. Here's your oh. crown, King. But oh, like, yeah. damn. Tweet of the year. Damn. <laughs> Tweet of the motorsport world year. God damn. Stuart, yeah. you get a medal. Oh, dear. Uh, great, great tweet, Stuart. Great tweet. Um, Nikita Mazepin got the W in the end. Um, the reverse strategy once again coming into play uh, down the road uh, in the end. Mazepin in- ended up winning fairly comfortably in the end from his own teammate. It was a high-tech 1-2 finish in the feature racing as Luca Giotto still reasonably fast in second with uh, Louis Delatraz on the podium in third. What is Delatraz doing?! He's coming up to the podium with moves around the outside of San Donato. That's what he's doing. Sexy yeah. stuff. Being pretty good. Yeah, pretty good stuff from uh, from Delatraz there. A good reminder of the uh, positive side of his talents, indeed. Uh, yeah, his I believe that's his first podium of the year as well, actually. So uh, good for him um, on that one. Um, I think that those teams have been waiting for a while for one of those this year. So uh, good for him. This is first since the sprint race at Silverstone, but it's the first in a feature race. Uh, yeah, and the fair uh, and the sprint race was Christian Lungard back to front, just spanking the field. And he needed this because there were some cold streaks he was having through uh, Silverstone two in Catalonia. Uh, yeah, he's back in this fight now. There's a there's a case that he could have won both races because the feature race had a big safety car towards the end that pretty much screwed Lingard out of a potential W. Um, it was looking pretty comfortable up the front until that safety car and that flipped the field upside down again, like we had in Catalonia. Uh, but Lingard was clearly the fastest man in, a, in an F2 car this weekend. That Mugello was dominant in race two. I think he won by 15 seconds. It was 14.3. It was a 14 yeah, second beat him down from Christian Lingard on that one. Uh, Delatraz once again in second, and shout out to Yuri Vips in third. Great result for the standing at Dams. The there. VIP section is open for business. <laughs> yes, yes. And he's going to be uh, sticking around for the next round. Yep. Indeed. With uh, Mick fourth, Guan Yuzhou fifth, and Kana Mylot sixth. So looking at the championship standings in a, after a pair of great fun races there. Mick Schumacher still in the championship lead at 161 yeah. points. No, Kana Mylot- not still. He stole it. He no, stole he it yeah. because, yeah, Ilot had, uh, well, his, his, his weekend wasn't that great. Yeah, it no, basically got compromised from the moment that he got sandwiched between Jack Aitken and Guan Yu Zhou in the feature race. And 
what looked like a sure podium to seal the championship lead, that pretty much wrecked his weekend. To say nothing of Robert Schwartzman, who retired of the feature race, and Yuki Tsunoda, who along with Schwartzman didn't score points at all this weekend. Mm. Yeah, and Mick Mick is really out here just... He, he's just hitting everyone to death with the consistency stick. Mixter consistency, as we call Also it. worth noting, Mick Schumacher, once again, the clutch whisperer. This man, whatever, however he's getting these starts, I want to know. I want it for myself. It's going to be a good championship fight as we come down the stretch, it's, isn't it? It's going to be great. Yeah, because yeah, Mick Schumacher wants Everyone 61. has a different X factor. Yeah. It's like, really nice that when you've got three or four mm. drivers who genuinely have a different strength to their game, all fighting for the title. Indeed. Mick, 161. Callum, 153. Christian Lungard up to third now, actually, after that very strong weekend. He had a 145. And then Robert Schwartzman starting to fall off a little bit with six races left. Because uh, they're, they're doing Sochi um, in next week, and then they're doing both Bahrain rounds. That's the end of the Formula 2 season. Um, and Schwartzman now on 140 in fourth, 21 off the top. Um, so, yeah, Robert's starting to lose some ground here. He had a bit of a scruffy weekend himself. Uh, didn't score points at all this past weekend. Uh, the DNF of due to a car failure in, in the first race, and then only ninth, just missing out on the points in the sprint race after making a mistake where he went across the gravel in the uh, first pair of chicanes. And he, and he, he was looking set for a few points there, but uh, yeah, not going to happen um, on that one this time around. So yeah, looking interesting there, and uh, certainly, and uh, it's 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 going to be a dogfight over this season goes on. I will probably make a little standalone video on the channel in the next couple of days talking about the FDA situation, because... Uh, it could be. It could very well be a case of three into two might not be able to go here, and uh, someone could miss out here. Uh, a big hitter in that in that championship might miss out. That's going to be very interesting to keep an eye on, indeed. Gentlemen, let's get out of here because we've been here for over eighty minutes now. But uh, yeah, we got a PS Five showcase to watch. I, uh, I may sure? or may not be dual screening y'all and it. And man, uh, mm. Final Fantasy sixteen. I am. 16,000% erect. Thank you Indeed. for tuning in to our PS5 Showcase Reaction Show slash Motorsport Podcast. Dre, tell them where you can find us. Yeah, 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 while Cam gets the baby oil out, we can find us on youtube.com forward slash motorsport. Uh, excuse me. I think we just established King as the oil expert here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook.com forward slash Motorsport 101, Twitter and Motorsport underscore 101. Our personal handles are on the screen right now or in the description down below. Uh, and if you feel like us a lot, you can back us financially on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Motorsport 101. Five dollars gets you early access to all of our audio shows. Ten dollars for the video upgrade on that, as well as the supporters club of our Discord server entry, where you can listen to these shows live as they're being recorded. I've been Dre Harris, and they've been RJ O'Connell, Ryan King, and Cam Buckley. We'll be back for some IndyCar talk as well, because that'll be recorded a little bit later on in the week. I'll be talking through uh, both races at Mid-Ohio. Some fun to go through from that as well. And check out, there'll be a bonus Le Mans preview video going up on the channel as well, so stay tuned for that. A lot of content coming up. Until then, I've been Dre Harrison, they've been RJ O'Connell, Ryan King, and Cam Buckley. Until next time, sayonara. Later, y'all. Bye. Beware the DRS wings. And crack open the extra virgin olive oil, because pretty soon it ain't. <laughs> <laughs>